Hi, this is Heather O'Rourke. How you doing? Hello. Where are you from, Heather? San Diego. San Diego. Okay. She is featured in the upcoming film Polar Geist. Steven, Spiel Steven Spielberg, right? Did you want to say something to Mr. Spielberg? What, Go ahead. what was that? I want to say happy birthday to him. Oh, happy birthday. To Steven Spielberg, to Steven Spielberg. Okay. <laughs> okay. Heather's wearing a nautical sundress in white knit with bright red and white stripes and a beach motif on the skirt. Turn around just a little skirt? bit, Heather, so we can see. See that pretty little applique on the skirt? There. It's also available in ship's blue. The dress, like many other Buster Brown clothes, is in a co cotton polyester blend, which, of course, combines softness mm -hmm. and comfort with easy wear. Oh, yeah. Right? As cute as you can be. The nautical theme is numero uno in Europe with the fashion trends. What kind of movie is that that you're going to that you're in? German ghosts. About ghosts? About ghosts? Is it scary? Uh -oh. It's really scary. Look at those eyes. I, I just love those I eyes. want one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so I much, Heather. Take you home with me. Bye-bye, Heather. Beautiful. That's Heather O'Rourke and the line she made famous in Poltergeist at five. She still remembers how Steven Spielberg taught her everything she knows about looking scared. Well, he would open his mouth and have his eyes wide like he was scared. And so he showed me that and I did it exactly how he did and he told me to do it like this on this scene. She's seven and a half now, a maturing talent, you might say. Worked hard most of the summer, but it's the recent improvement in her report card that she takes the most pride in. Um, I got two A's, two B's, and three C's. But on my second one, I got, um, I got 11 A's and two B's. Mm -hmm. So, it was, my parents were happy about me getting those kind of grades and stuff in school. She did manage to take some time off with them this summer, between takes, just to be an ordinary kid. Well, my favorite thing to do is swim and play and have fun. But she can't stay a kid forever. And if she does decide to go for it, after this pony ride on Dad's shoulders, would they stand in her way? No, if, if she enjoys it and wants to continue doing it, then we'll give her the support that we as a family should give her to follow through with what she wants to do. They're gone. The movie-going fans' hearts as she appeared in Poltergeist this summer. She is about to become a uh, member of the Happy Days television crew, and she's with us this morning. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you on the show this morning. Is today a school day for you? Mm, no. Well, it is, but um, since I had a junior fight... Had to kind of play hooky? Yeah. Well, we won't tell anybody. What grade are you in this year? Second. Second grade, huh? And you're going to school down in um, Santa Ana? No, um, I'm up here in school. Oh, you're up here in school. Oh, well, that, yeah. See, she, she lives in uh, uh, a suburb of San Diego <clears throat> called Santee. And now that she's part of the uh, Happy Days crew, I guess you had to move up here because you're working all the time, huh? When you were making the, uh, the movie Poltergeist, did you know it was going to be so scary? Well, no. Well, when I did it, it wasn't scary because I, I, I felt like I was really happy when I did the movie. Uh-huh. It was just a lot of fun. How did you get to be in a movie? Well, my sister Tammy, she's in like two movies and a TV show, like little TV show, mm -hmm. um, so I dance and sing and I liked it really much, so I got the idea of her, so that's, I got... So you decided, what the heck, if my sister can do it, then I'll do it too, huh? Yeah. Well, good for you. You didn't waste any time jumping right into the, uh, right into the big time, so to speak. And when you got to be on the movie, what was that? I mean, you had a good time, you said, and, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Were you nervous at all when you first started? Well... Or are you a born ham? <laughs> I, I was very nervous when I um, did the movie because first time I did it because if my sister's not nervous, I won't be nervous. Oh. <laughs> little sibling rivalry <laughs> I hear here. Huh? And now you're going to be on Happy Days. Yeah. Is that one of your favorite programs? 
Yes, my favorite show. Can you believe you're going to be on it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about when you first met the fauna? Well, I had a funny feeling in my stomach because I, I just love fondue because, you know, I just had a funny feeling in my stomach. Oh, uh, you know, I have a daughter who's uh, about a year younger than you, and she has a picture of the fawns that he signed for her on her old dresser, and every night before she goes to bed, she says, Good night, Fonzie. Oh, you little sweeties, you all like the Fonz, huh? How about Ronnie Howard? Did you meet him, too? Yeah. Yeah? You've met everybody. Have you done some of the shows? Yeah. Yeah? Well, and uh, you're a little bit little bit taken back, but you got right into it and said, If my sister can do it, I can do it, too. Did I hear in an interview one day that you were learning how to sing and dance or to play the piano? Yeah. Yeah? Did you, and you were working on uh, Bippity Boppity Doo? Bippity Boppity Boo. Bippity Boppity Boo? Oh, I used to know Bippity Boppity Doo. Bippity Boppity Boo. <laughs> Do you know how to sing that? Yeah. Could maybe I have a couple of uh, choruses of Bippity Boppity Doo? Okay. We don't, the AM pianist unfortunately takes the bus to work and he couldn't get here today, so let's start out. If your mind is in a dither and your heart is in a hay, I heard you did and give you hope with the magic phrase. If you're chased around by trouble and you're followed by the jeans, I drink the trouble and trouble your drinks with the magic drink. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrific. You really, uh, <laughs> you're, what, are, are you taking lessons regularly now on the piano? Um, I, well, the piano, our piano is in our storage, so, um, I don't get time to play the piano. Uh -huh. When you're uh, doing a show, you have to learn a lot of lines. Is that easy for you to do? Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, do you read the lines, or do people read them to you, your part to you? Well, sometimes Henry helps me so I can get the, the feeling and the, the talking how he wants me to do it. Uh-huh. So I do how he wants me to do it. Yeah. Do you ever say to him, hey. Well, only in the parts that I have to do. <laughs> they don't let you ad lib, I take it, huh? Well, you're sure, Judy. I'm glad you're on this show on this old rainy, dreary Wednesday because you brightened it up around here. I wish you continued success. Hope you have another big movie hit, more parts in TV. And if your sister does, we, we know that you'll be right behind for sure, huh? <laughs> If she gets anything, <clears throat> Heather's right there. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Little cutie fly. She'll be appearing uh, regularly on Happy Days, as we say. Uh, uh, the season premieres on, on Tuesday, September 28th at 8 o'clock, right here on ABC. Uh, where you can find the best buys all year round, coming up after this. Scarier. <laughs> How come? Well, because it's got more special effects, more scary scenes in that one. And the first one, it didn't have that many special effects. It had special effects, but this one it has. I didn't know who he was, and he came over, and he asked if I ever been in any movies, and I go, no, and he goes, do you want to come to my office for an interview? And I go, sure. It's fun because you get to meet a lot of people, and different famous people, and you get to learn different things. What do you do in your spare time, Heather? Well, I collect Cabbage Patch dolls, and I have 16 of them. Wow. And um, I ride my all-terrain motor vehicle, which is also called an ATV. It's four-wheel. Where do you ride that? Off dirt roads. Uh -huh. And I also assist my mom in safety courses for those ATV classes. Pretty good. Heather O'Rourke, she stays busy. It's kind of nice to be in a room where the uh, toys don't come alive and scare you, right? Yeah, I don't want them saying, hello, little one, you are the <laughs> angel, <laughs> like the robot. The <laughs> They're <too>. here. <laughs> That's great. That was really nice. Thank you. Who are you going to be donating the money to, it for the charity money? I'm going to be donating it to Jerry Lewis's kids for muscular dystrophy. I've met some of those kids, and I think it's a worthwhile organization. Yeah, it really is. I think that's great. Thanks. <laughs> and I know you've got a Christmas wish for everybody. What is it? My Christmas wish is to wish everybody on Earth a very Merry Christmas and a very safe Christmas. Important wish. Thanks. Thank you. Heather and this guy came up to us. We didn't know who he was or anything. And he said, have you ever been in any movies? And 
we said, no, and we were not interested in talking to this stranger at all. We said, we just wanted to eat our lunch. So he said, well, can I just interview you for this part? And we said, sure, why not? It was for a six-year-old, and I was only five at that time. And when we got in there, I had to be frightened of this pink fish and this purple pig, and I just thought it was hilarious. I just laughed. And so he didn't think that was very good of me. <laughs> so we, he told us to come back again, and he told my mom to bring in, like, a storybook. And we had to read that, and I had to scream and cry and all this. And I just said I could not handle it much more. That day when we came in, we saw his posters, you know, from Close Care of the Third Kind, Jaws, and then we realized who this man was. So we, we thought we were just totally fools. Well, it's the short time you were playing Carol Ann. When did it start? Um, it started when I was five years old, and I was in the MGM commissary eating there, and Steven Spielberg came up to me, and he asked if I've ever been to movies or anything, and I said, no, I have not. And he said, well, can I interview you for this movie? And we said, sure. We did not know who he was or anything. We just decided, you know, to go in there and see what would happen. And he talked to me a little bit, and he had me come back, and he, he wanted me to be afraid of this purple pig and this pink fish, and I laughed instead, which I don't think I should have, but then he said, well, I'll give you the script for me and my mom to look over, and we did, and the next day I came in, and I did the script, and I screamed and cried until I just told him that I couldn't handle much more, and he called us back and said that I got it. Do you have problems learning your lines? No, I don't. It comes easy to me, and I just, I look over the lines, and I concentrate on them, and I go over them many times, and then I try it without looking at them. And I usually get it right, so it comes pretty easy. But when you did the first poll, the guys, you couldn't even read. Yes, I could. Yes, you yeah. could when you were five years old. Yeah, you I read, read, see, I was in kindergarten. I read before I got into kindergarten, learned how to read then, so. What is a poltergeist? It's a German ghost, a German baby. Now, you're not only here to film Poltergeist 3, but you're also here to help us out. Yeah, um, the reason why I'm here, because I know how it feels to be sick. Because in February, I was very sick and I almost died. Because I got these stomach pains. And we, my parents took me to the hospital and they said that I just had a bad case of the flu. But one day I came back home from school and my feet were all swelled up. They were really fat. And so my parents brought me back to the hospital and they admitted me right into the hospital. They took all these blood tests and x-rays until they found out that I got a parasite from drinking water in, in the mountains where we used to live. And so they gave me all this medication and all that and I'm feeling much better now. Great. 